When you see your favorite brand of tuna colorfully displayed on the grocer's shelf, you perhaps think of it as a delightful adventure in eating. But do you ever think of the real adventure behind that can of tuna? The dramatic, suspenseful story of the men who spend at least six months out of every year of their lives searching the seas, battling the elements, risking their lives to bring one of the sea's great delicacies to the family table. The tuna story begins in San Diego, California, the home of America's largest tuna port in the entire world. Here at the Embarcadero are the modern tuna clippers ready to go down to the broad Pacific after the wily skipjack and the yellowfin. The modern tuna clipper is a gleaming testimonial to the scientific progress of marine engineering. Since the precious cargo of tuna must often remain aboard for months at a time. The ship's hold is a series of refrigerated vaults capable of holding 350 tons of tuna, quick frozen within minutes after the catch. The clipper is powered with an eight-cylinder diesel engine having a cruising speed exceeding 12 knots. The ship's two-way radio maintains constant contact with shore stations and with other ships in the vicinity. To cope with the problem of all weather navigation, the clipper is equipped with radar. Thus, the skipper is able to scan the horizon with unerring precision rather than rely on the old method of human reckoning. Preparation of the clipper for the adventure means that every piece of gear and equipment must be finally checked and compactly stored. This craft becomes the only home these men will know for the next few months their only refuge against storms and angry seas. Therefore, it must be stocked with not only the standard provisions, but with everything from medical supplies to movie films for the comfort and welfare of the fishermen. Every piece of gear and equipment has a reason for being. It must function. And it must remain secure against damage or it will not function when needed. These men make a simple routine out of what would be the adventure of a lifetime to the average man. They've been chosen because they're well adjusted to this life and because they respect the rights of the other men with whom they must live and work. It's not unusual for the wives and families of the men to gather on the pier for the departure, for unlike the ordinary husband who goes to his job daily, these men will be gone from three to four months sometimes longer. Manuel Silva has been fishing for 50 years. Carl Sores, the skipper whose family boasts generations of fishermen, gives the signal to start the engine. The chief engineer makes a last inspection. And so the voyage begins. The men wave a final farewell to their loved ones as the clipper points her bow toward the breakwater and the open Pacific. And wherever tuna abounds, so goes our clipper, chicken of the sea.
The skipper plots a course to water somewhere off the coast of Central America. But first, we hope to find live bait at Macapulli, Mexico, in the Gulf of California. So the compass heading reads southeast. Since trapping live bait is our first mission, all hands turn to preparation for the catch. The most important single item is the net, which is carefully stacked in the skiff. The day dawns bright and clear as we finally reach the bait grounds. The ship's entire personnel have become well oriented and each member of the crew goes about his duties with precision and efficiency. The first piece of equipment over the side is the bait receiver. The speedboat is lowered. And finally, the skiff, loaded with the bait net. Since we intend fishing in warm, tropical waters, we'll use anchovetta as bait because they are native to the same waters as the tuna. So our lookout studies each swell and ripple, hoping for signs of the little fish. The pelicans, too, regard anchovetta as a tasty morsel. And as we sight these strange-looking birds, we feel confident we are approaching live bait. Goonie birds in the vicinity also signify that anchovetta are around. More pelicans move in. We know now we're right on top of the bait. The netting operation begins as the boats start paying out the net. This is shallow water and not deep enough for the tuna clipper. When the net completely surrounds the school of Anchovetta, it's pulled in, trapping the bait inside. Here's an unwelcome stranger that causes the fisherman no end of trouble. We call him a one-finger shark because he nips off one finger at a time and, in spite of his small size, can rip a bait net to shreds. The skipper is alerted by radio that the catch is in, and the speedboat loses no time in bringing up the bait receiver. This transferring operation from the net to the receiver is dangerous not only to the crew, but to the fish themselves, because anchovetta frighten easily and in panic do great damage to themselves. When the bait receiver is full, it is towed with great caution back to the tuna clipper. Here, another equally hazardous transferring operation takes place. The hold of the clipper has been filled with seawater, which is circulated to keep the bait alive. To the fisherman, the bait is known only as chum, and the man who handles it is thousand scoops of chum will be in the hold before we leave the bait ground. As the bait is being gently transferred, more pelicans drop down for a fish dinner. Unmindful of the men, they figure this is a feast for them alone. With the clipper's hold crammed full of anchovetta, we head south for the tuna. Life aboard consists of waiting as well as working. But the men are resigned to it, for they have practiced it year after year. This man roughs his pole so his hands won't slip when he's landing those big fellows he's hoping for. This man is making a squid. The squid is a large, single, barbless hook whose shaft is embedded in feathers and wrapped with calf skin or dolphin skin. When it's thrown in the water, its actions resemble those of the squid, a cuttlefish the tuna like most of all. It's attached to the line with a fine steel wire leader. The day starts at 5 a.m. And the men are right.
right on hand for that early breakfast of steak and potatoes. Lots of it. The cook, well, the cook doubles in brass. He's just as handy with a fishing pole as he is with a skillet. A masked man is constantly aloft in the crow's nest. Perhaps he'll sight porpoises as they leap in and out of the waves, hoping to feed on the small fish that the tuna drive to the surface. Now the man on the bridge scans the seas with high power binoculars. Tuna bird. Uh, this means we're nearing a school. Tuna, the sign we've all been waiting for. The clipper moves through the porpoises into the school. Every man on board goes into action. This knee pad is as important to a fisherman as it is to a football player. Heavy boots protect their feet. They're slit this way at the top so they can be put on or kicked off quickly. And this strong leather pad is used not only for protection, but as a socket for the pole. And with the precision of a highly trained team, the men move in preparation for the catch. The chummer goes to work throwing out the live bait. The tuna, in their frenzy for food, strike at anything, including the unbaited hooks. On they come, and with each flash of a pole, 20, 30, 50 pounds of tuna are tossed on deck. strangest phenomena, reserved only for fishermen. These are spinning porpoises, and they jump as high as 15 feet in the air. Uh-oh, that flashing white belly, that's no tuna, that's a shark. Our rights to the fish are being disputed by those savages of the ocean, the shark, the barracuda. He hit him, a fatal shot right in the spinal column. shark is as determined as he is deadly. Has been known to jump clear out of the water to grab a fish that's been hooked. Sharks have even jumped onto the racks with the fishermen. He searches about underwater, ready to make a ferocious pass, slicing with a razor-like accuracy. The barracuda is just as deadly. One of the fastest swimmers in the sea. He, too, is waiting to move in on the unwary tuna. Another shark is hooked. As he's brought on board, it can be seen plainly why he frightens the tuna. His teeth are like razors. 